Hey there, uh, YouTube land. Um, today I'd like to show you uh, another vintage fishing reel and rod um, that I have been using lately, and uh, also a some repairs, I guess. Um, anyway, so uh, the first one I'm going to show you is uh, this one. This one has an old. Um, Zebco 33 uh, aluminum body, uh, but it has steel gears instead of brass, so it was made between, I think, 1967 and 68, based on my research and things I've seen. Um, and I have it mounted on a old Garcia Conlon casting rod. It's a two-piece, uh, six-and-a-half-foot medium action rod um, so uh, I thought I would show you a repair I did on this rod I had to repair an eyelet and the reason it is because when I was younger see this rod is collapsible and I have it collapsed when I was younger this was stuck and I was trying to get it out and I snapped an eyelet off and for years it sat there without the eyelet. Well, after watching some videos on how to replace fishing reel rod eyelets, I decided to give it a try myself, and I did it on another old Zebco spinning rod, and then I decided to try it on this one. So what I used was just some regular old uh, sewing thread, and I also used a uh, 3M77 super adhesive. It's a spray-on adhesive. And what I did first is I wrapped some layers of sewing thread around. And then I put spray this I sprayed the adhesive on and then we put bread then my dad put bread ties around it because I was a little nervous about the strength, but I took the bread ties off because I figured, you know, it probably wouldn't need them and um, but the bread ties did a good job of holding the eye in place and keeping it from moving so it would stay in one place um, I got the eyelet from a broken section of a old rod and you know it was a kind of a vintage rod it had the same style eyelets that would be common at the time see this Connellan was made at least according to some people that I've talked to in the mid 70s um, so probably 74 to 70, between 74 and 76, I'd say, 1974 to 76. Uh, and you know, I've been taking this out and, uh, I took it out Sunday for the first time. And I caught a decent amount of fish on it and the eye repair held up. I caught a few sunfish, uh, two small bass and... Managed to get one crappie, a uh, keeper crappie, because I wanted one to take home to eat. I wanted something to take home to eat. Uh, it was a ten and a half inch crappie, and uh, here in New York, crappies have to be at least uh, nine inches to keep, and uh, you can keep 25 per day or person, so I was happy with that. And I took it out yesterday, and I caught... Uh, a blue, uh, bluegill, a sunfish on it, uh, but nothing else. Uh, the bite was kind of slow. We had a cold front move through, so it's been kind of slow. But anyway, um, the other repair I'd like to show you is uh, on my Mitchell 300A. You guys have seen this before. Um, so the repair on this one was what happened was is that um, the original bale screw, this screw, the original one, I was it was loose and I was trying to fix that and I thought I had it fixed so I decided to test it, you know, by opening the bale and shutting it and it went flying across the room somewhere and I never found it, I haven't found it, um, but I went to my grandparents recently and I have, I had accumulated some spare Mitchell parts. So I had a spare 
fit some spare bail screws there. And the threads were close enough to the original, I guess, that it fits in there. But the problem was, was that there was still a big gap, because this is a little bit longer of a screw than what the original was. So to reduce that gap, as you can see, hopefully the camera will focus on that, I put a plastic shim in there to help reduce it. Um, I f I'm not sure where this plastic shim is from. It could be from a, a reel or something. Um, but at first I noticed the hole in it was too small, so I had to widen it with a pencil. And eventually I got it to the point where I could slide it over the screw. And I would just screw, put the screw in. And now there's really no not much of a as much of a gap you know it's reduced it quite a bit and it's been working fine you know i can open and shut this all day long and so far and the screw will not fly out no matter how hard i how much force i use you have to excuse the sound i might have to fix this a bit tend this back a bit um I also took this out with me yesterday and I put it on um, a more modern rod, a modern Berkeley Cherrywood rod. Uh, you guys have probably seen this too. Um, and I caught a, well, I caught a sunfish on it. I also caught a brook trout, which yes, I also took that home. Uh, the sunfish I threw back. I really don't want sunfish. You know, I'd rather have trout and crappies. Uh, I'm waiting for bass season. Um, that doesn't open until the third Saturday of June here in New York. But, uh, you know, if I get some, but, you know, in the meantime, I just try to fish for things I can take home. Um, so, and there's also a repair on this rod. See, this rod was originally six foot six. But one day I was moving this rod and I got it caught in one of these drawers behind me. I have to excuse these are kind of, and so I snapped a section of the rod, which I think I still have somewhere. Um, but I snapped a good, you know, about probably, you know, the a good front portion of the rod. So I had to place the rod to. And I got one of those rod tip repair kits. I got Eagle Claws brand, but other companies make them. And basically, you just use the glue that comes with it and a lighter, and you have to use heat to get it on there. But it's been holding up fine. Um, you know, it's good and strong. And yeah, well, while it, you know the rod's a bit shorter than it used to be, it still works. Which is what should matter. It's what matters. Um, Thank you for watching this video, and if you haven't already, please comment, like, and subscribe.